Like, oh, it might be a little overrated. Is it, though? But it's not. It's yeah. freaking great. Like, You're right. Yeah. What the fanboy could never be overrated. Yeah. We are great. We are... <laughs> properly rated. <laughs> underrated. <laughs> We're <laughs> accurately rated. We are rated. We have some ratings on iTunes. Are we... Did we decide that we're <laughs> fanboy worthy at some point in our past? I in mean, I might be what? a little biased, but I think... <laughs> We're, we're either a Booya or a Matthew McConaughey because we have great abs <laughs> like what? Matthew McConaughey. That's how our rating system works, right? Matthew McConaughey means there's great abs in, this, in the movie. Why did we even let him back in the studio? You let me walk right through the door. <laughs> He's been... I, to be fair, I told you to go away. He goes to and, Florida for a week. And my and comes dog back didn't about stop abs. you, so... Are you doing sit-ups on the beach in Florida? No. So this is this is what How I... How tan are you? Here's my tan line with my watch. I have a pretty nice tan line. From... It's Mormon time. Woo! Ooh. Um, <laughs> it's Mormon No, so here, time. real quick, this is what I do at the beach now that I'm 30. Well, what, tell us what um, you do at the beach and then tell us... What, well, you gotta do intros, huh? I'm Luke. That's Tyler. And that's Brett. Let's Welcome. Go. That was a, that was a short we're, tweet. We're what the fanboy. We've done some episodes of this thing before. <laughs> Luke's gonna tell. Actually, us what he did. it's our five year anniversary today. <gasps> Let's go. That we 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 released our Wonder Woman episode. Ugh. How exciting! Today. It's the oh yeah it is. one at ep- one episode I was like never even aware of. Yeah. Because episode two, you invited me. Yep, I slid in your to, DMs. To be on. To be on episode three. Oh, was it three? I thought yeah. two was... Two, we reviewed Injustice. Uh... Two. And thir- three was E3. Fair enough. And it was like a four-hour episode, because we went through every <laughs> single game. Why did we do that? Because we're awesome. we were new, and we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> We still don't know what we're doing. Hey, at let's least be honest. at least we had more mics at that point. <laughs> we did have more mics by then. Yeah, we, we the only, first episode we had one mic. We, oh, we, you were sharing a mic. Yeah, it we. Was it was me, Chris, and Tyler on the corner of like a a, a a sectional a sectional couch, and with the microphone, and we are just like all around it like this, <laughs> like I really close. It. If somebody wanted to say something, they would lean in and be like, "I've got something to say." <laughs> I remember when I came on for episode three, didn't you guys have like a chalkboard table? Yeah. You were like taking notes on? Yeah. yeah. That table was awesome. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was cool. We should just replace this with the... No. I... No, no. we shouldn't. <laughs> we all have computers now. <laughs> anyway. I know. Oh, okay. Back I know. to my beach story. Like yeah. yeah. Um, beach story. Now that I'm 30, when I go to the beach, I, I, I usually just go out as like as far as I can comfortably... And then I just float there. And when I get tired of floating, I'll just stand there. And then I'll start floating. And I'll do that for about three hours. Wow. (laughs) That's what I do. Oh, my. I did that every day this past week. Maybe except one because a tropical storm came in. and (laughs) It rained a lot that last day. but That's fantastic. And I I wouldn't really trade it for anything. It's, It's great. It's super relaxing. Just if if silent, you, not talking to anybody. It is actually very quiet. I can't even imagine three hours of like this is what happens when you have a kid. Like you just have to worry about them all the time <laughs> for three hours. Right, three hours of just being able to stand and float and stand and float. Well, I, I mean, my, can't even comprehend. My parents might have been out there because I went with my parents and I talked to them, but then they'd go back in for a snack and you I would stay no out snacks. there sometimes, and I'd just you know float there and I'd. You know, get caught in the tide and drift off and have to come back close to where our stuff was. and It was nice. Fun fact, you mentioned floating. I I don't float. I, like, am really bad at floating. You'll float in the ocean. It's salt water. But it's... It's, like, impossible. It's wavy, too. Like... Yeah, but... How do you not get, like, bumped and, like... Because it's salt water. It's... 
you're very buoyant in salt water. He's right, you know. I don't believe you. You should uh, go to the Great Salt Lake or the <laughs> no, Dead Sea. I... <laughs> You'll probably walk on the water. <laughs> that I could believe. That I could believe. So, well, that's fun. I'm glad you're back, despite our earlier jabs. So It's okay. I'm used to the jabs. I was also on <gasps> vacation this last week, um, although it was a shorter vacation than yours. And uh, yeah, we, we went down to Branson, Missouri. I love Branson. And we didn't go to a lake, but we, we hung out at the pool for a little bit. So I, I have some water. I can relate to your <laughs> ocean. <laughs> I can also relate Story. to some water stuff this weekend, actually. Drink but... some water after your workout to get those McConaughey abs. Kind of. <laughs> But Keep yeah, going. no. Bran- Branson was great. It was good to get away for a couple days. Uh, shout out to my parents for taking us along. Great. Yeah, same to my parents. I think I talked said it last week, but they were like, "Hey, want to go to Florida?" And I was like, "Sure, yeah, I'll do it." <laughs> we missed out on our family vacation because I alone tested positive for COVID. Um, get wrecked back in April. <laughs> get good. <laughs> And uh, and so my, my and rather than just missing out on it, my parents were like, "Hey, immune system. you wanna you wanna come go back go back down to Branson with just us?" And we were like, "Of course." <laughs> so solid. Yeah, but yeah, Tyler, what did you? Uh, uh, my water story is: I ran a, a Gladiator Dash five k this past weekend, <sighs> and uh, now I'm tired. If you don't know what that is, it's a obviously a five k. Uh, with 26 obstacles throughout the race. Um, a lot of them involve mud and water. I was at Cedric County Park here in Wichita. Um, the water portions of it is like there's like a little creek that runs through and some little ponds but that people around here call lakes. Um, that you have to like go through. <laughs> it's Kansas. You gotta... Yeah. Um, we take what we can get. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was really fun. Uh, it was really dirty and muddy and uh, I didn't think it was too difficult but it was a good time I enjoyed it dana ran it uh, a bunch of people from work ran it i think there was like 12 or 15 of us um it was really cool i would absolutely do it again um, and i'd recommend it it's different uh, if you don't like to run it's a nice change of pace because you know there's obstacles and things that kind of take your mind off running so you yeah. can rest on an obstacle just by like struggling through well you it. kind of rest at the obstacles anyways because it gets backed up and so you end up having to kind of wait for your turn to do the obstacle. I'm just picturing somebody like climbing over a little hill and just being like, I'm stuck. A little, <laughs> little snooze for that would a bit be and then be like, okay, Absolutely. now I'll go. Like, the, the worst one for me was the monkey bars. And that's just because my shoulder oh, yeah. it hurts so bad, dude. It hurts so bad doing the monkey bars. Uh, Should just one hand. They, they had them spaced out pretty far. So you really had to like get after it. <laughs> It was, it was tough, and it's over like a mud pit, so you don't really want to fall in. And you do it right after you have to carry a 60-pound sack of sand up a hill. Oh, well, now I'm definitely not doing it. <laughs> it, it was cool, though. Um, if Dana can do it, you can do it. Your wife is definitely stronger than I am. <laughs> she birthed a child. <laughs> That's true. She did birth a child. Um, but no, it, it's, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. I'd recommend it. We should do it as a group next year. Fanboys take on the gladiator dash. <clears throat> Only if we can wear GoPros and yeah, microphones. Yeah. One of the girls from work wore a GoPro. I absolutely, just want to. Put... I don't want to wear a mic because well, I don't okay. want to get like shocked. <laughs> that's that's fair. But, a GoPro then, because you do have to like go into the water and like walk across and down it, and I mean it's not like a like I was fully submerged in water at one point. Love it. Let's do it. I'm in. Yes. We'll drag Luke, yes. kicking and screaming. You can do it, Luke. Just I'll just pull a Stanley or a Kevin, and when you guys get so far ahead of me, <laughs> no, I'm going to go enjoy a restaurant, and then I'm just going to cut into the finish line. At we're going to do the thing where like we tie ropes, ropes to, to you. Other. Like, all, yeah, we're all going to be connected. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but No, uh, I guess other than that, some of the things I did that, I, that you guys didn't do. Um, I played some Apex this weekend. I uh, played a, a decent bit. Got a couple wins. Uh, it's kind of coming back to me slowly. I, I've taken a, about a two-season hiatus from the game. Um, but it's it's really fun, man. I I don't know if this is a hot take. I don't really know what the pulse is. But I don't 
uh, love Stormpoint as a map. It's different. Yeah. Um, I don't feel like Stormpoint has like a natural flow to it like the other maps do. Mm-hmm. Um, and to me, it just kind of makes it feel like every game is just really slow. Um, and you get to like six teams left and you've not fought anybody. So you're not dialed in. Your armor is usually low if you're not lucky. It's just, I don't know. It's interesting. And especially with the new changes to ranked that they've done, it, it encourages placement over fighting. I think, I think they could have, like you described like the flow yeah. of where people are going. Like you need more choke points or something mm-hmm. to force people. Part of it is also Stormpoint has way more exterior, like good landing zones mm-hmm. than either of the other two. Right. And so more people land far away, s- spread out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I don't know how you fix that though. Yeah, I don't know. You just put World's Edge back as the ranked map and you forget about everything else. That's, <laughs> that's what you do. Um, other than that, I played Deathloop quite a bit. I'm pretty close to beating that game. Um, I've kind of talked about it from time to time. I think that game is one of the best game designs you can find. I, I just think it's, it's so cool. It's so fun. The mystery is really uh, interesting. It's it's one of few games that like when I feel like I'm close to beating it, I've not used guides on it because mm. I don't want to use guides. I want to yeah. figure it out like because I, I enjoy the gameplay so much. Um, there's some things that are a little wonky from time to time, like jumping is kind of iffy, uh, which can be really frustrating because it can really change your entire approach to a mission or an area. Uh, but great game. I'm hoping to beat it before this weekend um, coming up because have a prediction about it later that i want to talk about and uh yeah no and then i recorded my other show the big 12 takeover oh Uh, heck yeah last week's episode is doing pretty well talked about kind of what teams can establish a strong foothold after texas and oklahoma leave the big 12 so if that's your jam go check it out that's it other than that i did the things that we're going to talk about sweet luke did you do anything i played destiny yesterday um or saturday this um, week's story mission was good, right? Yeah, it's really good. I liked it. The The story in Destiny can, continues to be great. Um, the big thing this week was Iron Banner came back. Iron All Banana. buggy. And it is Rift. It was a rotten banana because it was full of bugs. Yeah, it. Uh, the progression system was all messed up based on your challenges or something. I missed a lot of it because I was gone. Mm, yeah, I think yeah, everything yeah. was mainly fixed. Um, if there was one bug where people would infinitely restart rounds and you <laughs> like couldn't finish the match until the timer ran out, um, I did get that actually in my very first game that I played. It was very annoying. Um, I think they have a lot of work to do to make Rift good. <laughs> It's not great. You didn't because I play. I played a little in D one. D one, yeah. But I played D one by myself, so the only reason I really would play Crucible was if there was a quest with it. Gotcha. Um. So I didn't do it a lot. Um. I think the game mode is cool. Um. But with all the bugs and respawn timers and everything. Just needed a little more time. It, it just needs a little more, all right, more work, and I think it'll it will be very good. Cool. I also played on the new map because it's the first time I played Crucible. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Four years later, Bungie releases a new map, and it's it's okay. It's it's built for Rift, I guess. Yeah. Um. I don't. I don't know. They they need another one now. Yeah. Just in Rift in general. There's three maps for Rift. And one of them is the worst maps in Destiny. <laughs> um But Well but yeah. Other than Destiny anything? Um Kenobi the Boys, Stranger Things. Nice. Which I think we're all we're gonna talk yeah, about. Yeah, we are gonna talk so. about that here in a second. Uh before we do that, I will real quick say that um I jumped back into, so after we got back from vacation, I jumped back into uh, Disintegration, which is a game that 
came out about a year ago? Two years ago now? Two years? 2020. What the freak? Pandemic. Crap. June of, June of what uh, the yeah. freaking crap. And unfortunately, it was not, was not received real... Not, it didn't have terrible reviews, it just didn't gain any... It was good. It was good, and it just yeah. didn't have any traction. Um, but I've been replaying it. My goal, uh, kind of in the next couple weeks, is to, is to beat it on its hardest difficulty, which I had not, I have not done yet. So I'm working my, I think I've got three more missions. Look at you, man. Look so at that's you been go. fun. You're a machine. I gotta go! Um, and then also I finished Under the Banner of Heaven. Tyler, did you, you've been, you were watching that, weren't you? But you haven't finished it. That was it. Luke. That was oh, me. Okay. I have three episodes. I was thinking about finishing it, and then... I didn't even because I was gone. I didn't know the boys was even out. Oh, so I, I watched the boys instead. <laughs> okay, well I won't give uh, a full review here because I want to save that for when someone else has actually finished it. And we I'll can, have it. We all of it done by it. when we review the next um, next stuff. But this is a really good show. Um, I I love how it tackles. Uh, n- Things like obviously it's a it's a like a murder investigation true crime uh thing because it's a, it's a based on a real story mm-hmm. um a, a actual events but how it grapples with extremism and um faith and like that not even a deconstruction but just a looking at your faith in a more serious way mm-hmm. and uh everyone's great in it but andrew garfield may win awards this year because of it should he should like, yeah. he's, he's fantastic um it's it didn't end up being quite as like we were always we were a little nervous about how much they would show on certain things and it's pretty tame it ends up being pretty tame on that um so if you were nervous about that I would, I would still, I would recommend this because it's, it's intense, but it's not overly graphic. Um, but it makes you feel things, and I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited. Little, I'm excited to finish it. Impression on that. So, yeah, great, good, good, good. Okay, should we talk about Kenobi? Yeah, let's do it. Episode three of Kenobi dropped this week. Um, Chances are there's going to be spoilers in our discussion just because of the nature of talking about ongoing shows. So if you haven't seen it, um, if you're in the live stream, feel free to yeet away for, for a moment. Um, and if you're listening to this uh, on the podcast, just check you, check the description for where you need to jump to. But yeah, um, they get, they get uh, I almost said Han. <laughs> Ben and somehow Palpatine has returned. Ben and, <laughs> ben and Leia. Man, I just I continue to enjoy their interactions. Yes. Um, and I don't know. Yeah. I the more I see of her, the more I can tell they are leaning into her ability to use the Force without really understanding it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just so appreciate that from Star Wars because we haven't really seen them do that you know using the force is always about how do i do something cool Mm -hmm. not how do i just i'm really good at reading people Mm -hmm. like that's a very different way of using the force that i think is probably described more in books and you know not the not the movies or the shows so Mm -hmm. but yeah what did you guys think of those those two characters as they i loved their conversation where Obi-Wan explains the force. Yeah. It's like turning on the light yeah. when you're afraid of the dark. Because I feel like they've never been able to explain it. It's like, oh, it's it's a living thing. It's all living things and it surrounds us and it flows through you. And it's kind of like, okay, well, <laughs> is it like air? <laughs> like, what does that mean? And I really liked how they explained it. I just, I, I really like turning enjoyed, on the light. I really enjoyed just the whole kind of the the tension as they're approaching the little checkpoints. Um, I I really enjoyed just kind of their mm. their uh, 
fake persona. Mm-hmm. Act. Yeah. Uh, I just really, <laughs> I, I love how Ewan McGregor has played Obi Wan into kind of this like dumb old man now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just it cracks me up every time, and obviously he has the name slip up. Yeah, which that, that was, part that, that's, that's kind great. of what you're talking about with Leia. Mm-hmm. Leia immediately is like, or she kind of gives him this funny look and then Obi-Wan gets him, gets out of it. And mm-hmm. I just, I love the, you're right. The dynamic between the two characters is so much fun. Um, I, I hope they keep Leia in the middle of this story based on how it kind of ends this episode. Oh yeah, for sure. She's, she's going to be a, a very, she's going to continue to be an important part of this yeah. story. Yeah. And then what? Do we <laughs> just drop the big? Vader's big, back. Vader's yeah. back. Vader's back. Um, I was it was a little. I was I wasn't well. I wasn't sure what they were gonna do because at the beginning of the episode he has this vision, or he kind of sees he Anakin sees Anakin yeah off to that. I'm like oh maybe like they're gonna be real cagey about this, and then it's Dude, like that ten minutes later. God, no. bum, bum, Dude, bum, that, bum, little, bum, that little bum, vision bum. thing though was so cool. It was good. It was so quick, but I was like, "Oh man!" Again, it, the ability of these actors and actresses to play with their face, yeah, right, the like emotion. That's, that's what makes a top tier actor. Yeah, is the ability to show that motion without having to explain it. Yep, so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess we do get the continuation, the the continued trend in Kenobi of a very slow chase scene, <laughs> but it works this time. Yes. <laughs> hey, but as we I actually today on Instagram, the slow chase works. We saw that video of the kids trying to open the door before someone Michael Myers walked and caught them. It does yes. work. It so can. I actually it can work. I. The Weekly Planet kind of talked about this, mm-hmm. um, and I never even thought about it. They film a lot of this stuff in the volume, and maybe that's why the chase scenes look so bad. They're in a they room. Have, they have 20 feet to run before yeah, they... Yeah, maybe <laughs> less. And it's just like, well, here we got to move across the room. It's kind of like... It. Cut. All right. Now we'll get the next shot. Kind of like the Robbie Mill throwing a football... Yeah. Four feet, but trying to make it look like he's throwing it 30 yards. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they're just so constrained to their space. Yeah. It just unfortunately makes it look bad. Go outside for these things. I say, you, you. I mean, build, yeah. Build one set for. I know building sets are expensive, but. Like, they don't need to use the volume for everything, but at least now, like, it kind of makes sense. I can, like, forgive it a little bit. That being said. The one in Boba Fett is still atrocious. <laughs> yes. Because they're riding bikes. <laughs> I feel like you can enhance that a little bit with CG. I love all the TikToks of the chase scene from the first episode. Oh, where People are like, <laughs> like chasing each other. It's so funny. Oh, man. But the, yeah. This chase scene I thought worked better. It, for sure. For sure. I, I think the ominous feel of Vader makes that work. Just the lead up to it when he's walking down yeah. the street. Dude. Just like... Oh, there's a kid. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, just, like, just kills the kid. I'm going to choke this kid's dad. The kid reacts. He's like, I'm going to break this guy's neck. <laughs> then I'm going to drag this woman with the force through the middle of this town. I was like, Jesus. <laughs> like, This is a Disney show. <laughs> but I love that they're not afraid to go there with Vader. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I, I, I feel like Disney so many times before in other properties just won't quite go there. They're afraid to have a villain. Yeah, yep. yeah, you you've talked about that a lot, um, and and just it's refreshing. Like I, I think it makes the story feel more real. Like there's an actual antagonist. Yeah, yeah, and this is <clears throat> the first time we've seen Vader post Revenge of the Sith, right? Well, Rogue One. Well, but in the but t- in, in the timeline, being... okay, yeah, this is him like at the. Height of his, I mean, I guess Rogue One probably is too, but like at the height of his dark, like being this is influenced the angriest by the, he's been. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. He's had absolutely zero. Uh, he's all out of emo- F's to give. Emotional right growth. <laughs> mm-hmm. he's, he's handled it 
very emotionally unstably. <laughs> we'll just say he's not open to the idea of counseling. Yeah. He's, he's very much set in how he feels right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I thought I thought that encounter um, was well done, and I think it's gonna it leaves room to build. You know, it's mm-hmm. not. I I was. A little bit afraid that they would go two balls of the wall right off the bat and get crazy. And then where do you go from there? Especially with a Disney show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like this this may have felt a little like underwhelming to some extent in terms of in terms of action. But at the for same no, Man, well, I'm saying yeah. for some people. Yeah. I'm if, saying for some people. If Obi Wan would have just ignited his lightsaber and came out full hero. I think I would I would have hated it because he's been he's so disconnected. He's, he's a borderline coward in this show. He's yeah. so afraid to take action. And for if if Vader would have showed up and he would just been like, Ooh, let's fight," it would have been just like, <laughs> "What happened?" To episode <laughs> we two? skipped like six episodes <laughs> there. So to see him just just run, just he's. The only thing he's showing is fear at this point, yeah. which is interesting because fear leads to the dark side. Um, um, and then, like, he ignites his lightsaber out of fear, mm-hmm. not to protect someone. He hurt. He hears a noise. It's just like, Ugh! oh, then he keeps running. And then he just got absolutely walloped. And I freaking loved it. Yeah. And the, the way Vader, oh. <laughs> you know decides to i'm not gonna like just in this real we're quick. not cutting you down remember we're... when you cut me in pieces and watched me burn alive i'm gonna let you burn alive Yeesh. your turn i loved it the, the you should have killed me when you had the chance mm-hmm. line. i was like i knew this was coming like i knew these words were going to be said oh yeah and i'm so glad they were yeah so good there's there's two things in this episode that i'm curious where they'll lead um, and I think one of them is probably, I, I've, I'm sure you guys have seen like the rumors for a season two. Mm-hmm. It, they're pretty hot and heavy. It sounds like it's going to happen. Um, they kind of have the line about Obi-Wan having a brother. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's an interesting thread. Don't need it. Interesting. I don't know what they'll do, but I mean, it makes sense for kind of his backstory, I guess. If If they do anything, I hope he... Just like goes and visits all their graves or something. I hope they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, I don't imagine they're alive. But I'd be very curious to see what that leads see, to. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The other I'm... thing I'm super interested in, and I think this will be a this season thing, is how close will they let Vader get to Luke and Leia at this age? Mm. That's that's my biggest question. How close to Leia will Vader get? And what would the conversation between those two characters be if they talk? I, yeah. I don't think they're going to interact. I don't think they'll talk. I, I, I think they'll be close, though. I think Leia is going to see him do something that really inspires, Vader do something that inspires her to be the, to, the kind of leader she is going to grow up to be. Like a flagship leader of the right. rebellion, yeah. right. It's gonna be something horrible, mm-hmm. um, and it'll affect her. I I think because right now she's a little bit too. I don't know. She's a kid, right? Yeah. But like, kind of that like cocky and like sm- you know, kind of smart alecky. Like she didn't really lose that though. No, she well she <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't but. To be in politics, and not that she was ever herself in politics as much as her father was, but I think to follow uh, Organa, not <laughs> yeah Vader. Um, although they are both in politics, if you think about it, to some degree. Vader is, or Anakin <laughs> is just part of aggressive negotiation. That's right. No, I. What I would be way more interested in in a season two is you know they in this episode they pointed out Jedi who had been here before. In Obi Wan mm-hmm. going and yeah, we got seeking a, them out. Seeking them out. We got a Quinlan Voss yeah. name drop, which was really cool. That what I think would make a really cool season two. Yeah, because as much as I love them, again, we just does every Star Wars thing have to have a Skywalker in it? Yes. Okay. 
Never in mind. season Never two, mind. it's revealed <laughs> that there is actually a triplet. <laughs> that somehow even Obi Wan and all those baby robots missed. <laughs> yeah, I think the the thread they'll pull on though is definitely going to be that Obi Wan family thread. You don't drop that in there yeah. for nothing. For yeah, sure. that's that's there for, sure. for a reason. Yep. I also can't wait for the uh, the you're not my dad TikTok vine line. You're not my Leia. dad. Oh, Leia yeah. to Obi Wan. <laughs> you're not my dad. Without the f word that follows that. I thought uh I thought Reva and the Inquisitor storyline was good this week because it. It showed us where they sit in the hierarchy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it showed us just how ruthless they... Vader allows them to be to each other. Mm-hmm. He does not give two <laughs> Fs about them at all. No. And all they are is trying to survive. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've seen Rebels, you know one of them in that group is still alive yeah. during Rebels. Yeah. Dude, I won't, I won't. awesome in this, by the way. Yeah, he is unrecognizable Dude, too. He's so sick. <laughs> you know who it is? It's Han from Fast yeah. and Furious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, he's. Awesome I did not this. know that. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. Blew my mind. Yeah, he's awesome in this. I've really enjoyed. It. He's he's like the the other like Inquisitor now, which I think is just really fun. Mm-hmm. He's done. He's done an awesome job. I'm I'm super pumped for this. I didn't realize it was coming out on Wednesdays though. Yeah. Like, because the first episodes came out on a Friday, and then it came out Wednesday, and I saw somebody tweet, like, Obi-Wan this week was sick, and I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> this is out? And I texted you guys, yeah. and I was like, is it out? And Brett was like, yeah, it comes out on Wednesdays. I was like, what? Yeah, Wednesdays is Disney Plus Day. I hate it. It is, it is weird, because, especially for those of you who listen to this show via the podcast, you'll probably be listening to it on, like, a Wednesday or Thursday, and we'll be talking about the episode yeah. previous sorry <laughs> not sorry okay now uh anything else about obi-wan kenobi i don't know though i'm i'm i've been pleasantly surprised by it yeah i, I, I like my expectations quite a bit and it's meeting them yeah i had zero it's... faith in disney plus to make a good show again yeah <laughs> but this has been good i liked the new girl the yeah. imperial imperial officer From, uh, girl mm-hmm. game of thrones mm-hmm <laughs> I liked seeing that stormtrooper get cut in half. That was cool. Oh yeah. Um, and I'm still waiting for Cal and. Dude, they're they're, they're dangling that so hard, dude. It's gonna happen. It's it's gotta. They're dangling that carrot <laughs> so gonna. much, man. They're like, you have help here, and they're like, oh, it's a freighter, and I'm like, you guys, dude. I <laughs> thought I thought they were gonna be like Quinlan Voss, but dude, I was looking for Cal Kessis, and I was gonna be like, oh. Yeah, no, they, every time they're like, you have people here, it, like, everything around it, I'm like, oh, that sounds like cow. And then it's not, and I'm like, okay, well, eventually it will be. <laughs> it's going to be the Mephisto of this show. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, like, just, like, show the mantis or something. or Like, flying in. I honestly, so what I thought was, I thought they were going to go, and f- I thought the pilot mm-hmm. was going to be Grease. Who's who's the four armed pilot from oh. from uh, Fallen Order? But it wasn't. He was just dead when they got just there. a dead man. I if was, I was a dead man, I was kind of hoping the dude who was transporting them to the the checkpoint was going to be one of the guys. That was Zach Braff. Mm. Was it yeah. Zach Braff? <laughs> That's you awesome. scoundrel. That's awesome. Um, over in the chat. Game Lord Master says Rogue One is the best Star Wars because it has no Skywalkers. Not because it does have a Skywalker. He says Rogue One is still the best Star it. Wars <laughs> movie, no Skywalkers, and technically Leia's in it too. But they're both at the end. It's fine. We're gonna that end scene's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I am curious. Uh, I have to save you again, Game Lord. What your feelings are on Andor? If you're excited for Andor, if you if you enjoyed Rogue One. No so. lie, that joke I think was the best joke in it's the boys. So good. Because a lot of people I think that flew over their head. Well, speaking of the boys, you guys want to talk about it for a little bit? I do. The first three episodes are out. I haven't seen any of them, so I'm gonna recuse myself from this conversation. But here's what we'll say. Is Tony Gilroy gonna have to save you Ow! again? Be sick. <laughs> if if you don't know, Tony Gilroy saved Rogue One. Rogue One. 
He's the reason that movie's good. Yep. Fun fact. Fun He's fun also fact. doing the Andor show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which I didn't know, and it got me a little more excited yeah. for it. Also, slowly Andor, getting excited for Andor. <laughs> not filmed in the volume. They were on. Are you telling me they went outside I'm and touched you, some grass? They built sets. They Never heard of grass? it. Grass sets. Boy, Tony Gurley I hardly like, know. We are her. not doing this volume. <laughs> I am not about this life. You will go outside with me. I'm glad. Anyways, the boys. Tony Gilroy joke does exist in that show. There's also a release the Snyder Cut joke. There's a lot of release the Snyder Cut humor at the beginning. There is an amazing cameo in the first couple of minutes that I was not expecting. Stormfront. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, are you talking about Stormfront? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. The story behind that's weird, too. I guess that person was just kind of around. Mm-hmm. They were like, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Get that um, money, I guess. I, I, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was cool. That was um, cool. Yeah. But, man, I forgot how good The Boys is. And the first three episodes, I watched all three, were fantastic. I am very excited for where this season is going to go. Um, if if you thought Homelander was uh, a little crazy before... Get ready because he's really starting to lose his cookies. Is he also on the like? I'm not going to see a therapist train. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. But he's also on the. Everything revolves around me, and if it's not revolving around me, I'm probably going to blow it up with laser eyes. Yes. Um, I've only watched episode one, and uh, I I would kind of share the same sentiment luke did you kind of i don't want to say you forget how good the boys is but excuse me the time between seasons you kind of just forget about the show and then it starts and you're like oh yeah this is like riding a bike i I remember this (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and the the first episode is kind of i think what you expect it to be there's a couple things where you're like oh my there's Um, one part where you're like oh my yeah there's one part where you're just like Wow. Um, you can't unsee it. No, yeah. <laughs> it's it's interesting for sure. Um, but uh, I really love the opening the opening bit with all the Zack Snyder stuff. I think that's hilarious. I, I was a huge fan of that. Um, and then, yeah, as you kind of learn where all the characters are, uh, there's some really cool storylines that I'm interested in seeing, like Mother's Milk stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I'm very curious about kind of how he'll fit. Mm-hmm. Um, moving forward, and then Butcher is in such an interesting spot, man. So interesting, and there's a scene in the first episode between two characters that I was just like, dude, this scene should not exist. I don't know how this is happening because it doesn't end how you'd think it would. Mm. Like it really caught me off guard. I was like, oh, well. the end of the first episode. No, that that I completely expected. The very end. I yeah. Completely expected okay. that. No, I'm talking about two characters who are very averse to each other, having a nice conversation, just chilling, having a convo. Butcher and Maeve. No, Butcher and Homelander. In that the end conversation. No, the end is uh, <laughs> the bureau lady. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. <sighs> I watched three episodes straight. Yeah, no, so it's it's butcher. It all blurs just together there, Luke. Chilling, yeah. talking, and you're like, with okay. the conversation. You're like, this is horrible. Yeah, but like they're just super nice to each other about it. You and know, it's so cool. That's pretty much all of how all of Homelander's conversations pretty much go like that. They're tense, dude. Yeah, the one with him and A Train is super tense too. I'm just I'm just waiting for the one time it's not a conversation. He just absolutely obliterates people. It's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be nuts. So it's, far, so good though. The, yeah, through one episode, for me, through three for you. Yeah, it's 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 really good. Yeah. Um, I mentioned Butcher and Maeve. I, yeah, Maeve. Yeah. Maeve isn't in this a lot. No, which I hope she's in it more in the coming episodes yeah. got, i think like two scenes in the first episode because i really like what she's doing yeah because her character is something that i think is missing which is yes decent human characters 
Or at least trying to be. Yeah. You have Huey, Starlight, and kind of. that's really it. Yeah. Because I guess maybe Mother's Milk. Yeah. Her podcast trying to join us. Don't let him in. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Mother's Milk, the the actor who plays him. Huge uh, Washington Commanders fan. Oh. <laughs> Shout out. Laz, I think is his name. I have no idea. Yeah. Cool. So, sounds like I should be watching that. Oh, yeah. As soon as possible. The voice is freaking great, man. Yeah, Laz Alonzo. Shout outs. Did you mean Mother's Milk, the boys' actor? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other final thoughts on that, or we'll just leave it there and we'll talk about I'll be the boys a lot more yeah, in I'll the be coming weeks. So, week. yep. Okay. Cool. Trailer reactions. Guys, we had like a bunch of trailers. We should just today. rapid fire these bad boys. Absolutely. You have a list? I have some, yeah. Um, the Sandman. We'll start there. Big thumbs, thumbs up, up here. This looks freaking sick. A bunch of these are on Netflix. If you if you haven't seen them and you want to want to just go to the Netflix's YouTube page because they uh, they have in... their geeked yeah. uh, event this week. So yeah, yep. lots of these will be over there. Um, Resident Evil, the TV show. Thumbs up. Thumbs up from me. I think this looks interesting. Zombies, thumbs down. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch it though, so. Cabinet of Curiosities. Oh, thumbs up. Big thumbs up from me. I think this looks freaking awesome and also terrifying. I didn't watch it, so I won't um, give it. 1899. I did not watch this one. From the creators of Dark. Did you watch this one? I didn't watch this okay, one. Okay, so this one's a thumbs up from me. Uh, my note here is, looks awesome. Reality isn't real. Uh, so what? yeah there's that whole thing uh Whoa. sweet tooth and shadow and bone kind of had these weird little there's a shadow and bone trailer they wrapped yeah. season two filming oh i really uh, like the first season yeah. of that show so i'm excited for season so two that's that. that's happening um and then the midnight club uh which is executive produced in the showrunner mike flanagan so my boy is doing some directing and wrote most of it that's my boy Heck i'll yes. check this one out just because flanagan's attached yeah yep. um yep <laughs> and then, like Brett was saying, Geeked is an event all week long. Uh, there's there's going to be stuff yeah, being announced throughout the week. We for sure get a Knives Out 2 trailer this week, right? They're filming all those back to back to back to back, right? When's it come out? It, 2022. They wrapped filming in like... I, I wouldn't be shocked if there's something from it. Why does it feel like a... Like a September, movie? October? Yeah. Maybe November, because they might want to try and push it for Oscars. Maybe Could more be. fall. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's um, But we did also get ones that Tyler didn't mention. Lock and Key, final season. Um, I've kind of been... It's okay. It's okay. Uh, it looks like they're at least amping it up a little bit. So. There'll probably be eight episodes. I'll finish it out. Yeah. Uh, the Imperfects is like Netflix's uh, <laughs> Inhumans. <laughs> I don't know. What mouth? I'll give it a <clears throat> thumbs down. I wasn't real interested in it. Yeah, I watched the second half of that trailer. Did not. Yeah, it wasn't moving me in any way, me. really. Yeah. Other trailers? I got some gaming stuff. I have the most. It's a TV show. This is the most important trailer that we could. What is it? Ever talk about? Oh, ever. Gotham Knights. Oh, oh yeah <laughs> on the cw oh man thumbs up talk about I'm totally kidding this looks horrible this is such an insult to to dc to television <laughs> to people that to bob kane and bill finger <laughs> spend their time doing anything that involves anyone this is atrocious. I feel so bad for the people that are involved with this. I feel bad for the shows that got canceled for this to exist. I don't, because CW needs to just cancel all their DC stuff. I think they need to cancel all their shows because they're all starting to be the same thing. You're not wrong. <laughs> they're all <laughs> gravitating towards the same like genre. Well, they all gotta be able to participate in the next multiverse crossover on the cw they're gonna bring in riverdale they're gonna bring in <laughs> what show they're what gonna bring in america's that? next top model <laughs> what show is left that can i guess the flash yeah he can do anything man he's fast 
He has a lightsaber. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, dude, this trailer is atrocious. The CW dude. has gone in the the app the toilet. I get why. And it's that toilet to be sold. has been thrown in a dumpster and that dumpster is driven off of a of cliff. <laughs> yeah. It's This it was, is the last breath, right? Like, this is this has gotta be the end. What happened? Dude, it fell off so hard. Stephen Amell got out when the getting out was right. He he was like looking at the schedules and everything. He's just like, mm, I think I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to go do a wrestling show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this this looks bad, dude. This is one of the worst trailers I've ever watched. And not just because yeah. of how far off of the subject matter it is, but just everything about it. Like nothing about it looks good to me. Nothing. Yeah, I it, feel bad for the actors and actresses that are on that show. I'm sure they're getting paid, but God, probably, dude. but probably not. I mean, it doesn't look like there's any money in this production. Do you like the Batman cow in this trailer? Looks like it was paper mache. Like in it's the not even it's classroom. not even like a design choice thing. It's like a material choice yeah, thing. It looks like so b- ah, we have to three D print this real quick, dude. We have no money. <laughs> the dead Bru- Bruce Wayne in the trailer. I almost like stopped like that was a spoiler. The dead Bruce Wayne in this is wearing a three piece suit and a Batman mask. It's just weird, man. Just this, that's like some weird sex kink thing. This this Batman is is styling. I guess it's weird. He's doing the Moon Knight thing where sometimes uh, he's in you a know suit, what sometimes that might be a joke, <laughs> but they that might be totally one hundred percent true. They might have watched Moon Knight and been like, "That's a good that's a good costume choice. Let's do that with Batman." Oh my. Gosh. Dude, it looks horrible. Thumbs down. If you've not seen this trailer and you want a, a good chuckle, go check it out. It's terrible. The are the, we being toxic or? I forgot <laughs> about a trailer that came out right after we recorded last week, and that was the new Pinocchio. I didn't watch this trailer. I didn't watch from, it either because screw Disney Pinocchio and with Tom Hanks. Doesn't show Pinocchio at all, which is fine. It's a teaser trailer, whatever. What I if, don't know. What if they never show Pinocchio in the <laughs> movie? He's always silhouetted or in the background. It'd be like Moon Knight. <laughs> they just do Pinocchio first person oh like gosh. hardcore Henry first person POV from <laughs> Pinocchio he's walking around he says something you just see this <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's something I that's, and hopefully it's that's a movie knows. slash show I didn't know I needed yep now I do is now he in a open domain yet Pinocchio oh. no we could do a R rated yes. hard, hardcore no, Henry because, version of Pinocchio. Because Del Toro is doing one for Oh the Geppetto? Yeah. So oh he's my, gotta be. Oh my gosh. He's gotta be. Is he, Tyler? I thought I was looking it up. He got that internet. He got them fast search skills. Yes, it is. Okay. Let's do it. Hardcore Henry Pinocchio. Pinocchio. R rated. Dude, you know how many props we had to make? Like, just arms. You, you, you just get strings and, like, paint and a Sharpie to, and just... <laughs> Dude, I bet we could get someone, like, just green screen our arm. You don't even need to show the arms. And then we'll just have someone... What if you got a... That's, easy, that's an easy thing. But when we grab Jiminy Cricket and just pop him... <laughs> Dude, we should cross over with the Winnie the Pooh movie. <laughs> That will be the sequel. It'll be Pinocchio versus Woody the Pooh. And then they'll team up to fight a more Dawn evil... of Toon violence. There you go. This is the they, best idea they ever. Team up, they team up to fight Mickey Mouse. Oh, Steam... No, it's gotta be Steamboat, Steamboat Willie. Willie. Steamboat Willie. It's gotta Willie. be Steamboat Willie. Yep. And then Batman, when he enters public domain, just shows up and beats the hell out of all of them. Could you imagine Steamboat Willie whistling his way to murdering people all the time? <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah anyways i didn't watch that trailer was it a thumbs up thumbs no down? it's a whatever, whatever. it's yeah. a whatever okay all right any other trailers before no. i go into some go into trailers? some game ones um okay so there's two trailers that literally no one else cares about on this show but me uh the first being pokemon scarlet and violet uh they revealed the legends kind of talked about how it's an open world game you're right nobody else cares yeah. you can <laughs> kind of go on your own pace go where you want to go there's no Why is like he still talking about this no one cares. shut up <laughs> there's line- it's a non-linear story much like breath of the wild um looking forward to this super excited it's kind of moving in a direction that i've always wanted pokemon to go so it'll be fun next one is the madden 23 uh gameplay and cover reveal uh, the gameplay reveal was today. 
have some new quarterbacking mechanics that I'm really excited about. And then it looks like they put a lot more of their focus on defense, which is good because defense has kind of been their afterthought. Can you throw it like Robbie and Mill now? No. So you can actually like <laughs> throw back shoulder passes and things like that now, like effectively. You can kind of... Instead of just hitting A. Yeah. Yeah. So you can kind of like aim the ball, which is... Whoa. Something... I know it sounds like really elementary and something that should be in games forever, but like you can truly, you have a lot more control passing. There's going to be aim bots for Madden now. Probably. It looks like it's going to be hard though. Um, Over in the chat. Sorry, real quick. Game Lord Master is only here for the Pokemon content. See, I know, I know you would be nice enough to not interrupt me, but I'm trying to talk about something I actually like, but these two D bags can't help themselves. Um, so, anyways, moving on, there was a PlayStation State of Play. Did either of you watch this? Mm-mm. I didn't even know you it was You know happening. I'm a hater, Tyler. When was it? Was I in Florida when it happened? Yeah, it was last okay. Thursday. Yeah, well, fun fact, Ryan Johnson actually writing one of the games revealed. It was really cool. Did it have, uh, does it have Xbox it was brand called... on it? No, then I don't care. No, it, it, but Ryan Johnson. It's a, it's a first place. It. And so that's where you draw the line? Is yeah. PlayStation versus Xbox? Brand loyalty. It's so also a campaign game. Yeah. Like it's only f- it's a single player. Single player? No, I don't want to. Play I, don't, I don't care. Yeah, it's not gonna win any awards. It's called the Callisto Protocol. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but State of Play last week for uh, Sony was actually really, really good. Uh, they made this announcement like we're only gonna focus on third party titles and PSVR. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what they revealed was actually way better than I expected it to be. Uh, the first being the Callisto Protocol, and we get a Looks game dope. like a gameplay CG trailer. As well as a release date um, of December second, twenty twenty two. Thumbs up for me. I'm really excited about this one. Big thumbs up. Yes. Um, they opened the state of play with a Resident Evil four remake trailer Ooh. that I thought was really good. Um, I think this game is gonna do incredibly well next year. It comes out March twenty fourth of twenty three. Um, then the game I did not know. Well, I've known I want to play it, um, but we finally got a release date for Stray. Which is a game about a cat the in a cats. world. The yeah. cats, yes. Yeah, it's a Sony game, dude. Stop. Stop acting excited. You're not allowed to be excited. Nope, I don't want um, it. They announced the release date for this of July 19th, which is my wife's birthday. It's super cool. I'll be in Colorado climbing a mountain. Nice. Uh, also announced that it will be part of the uh, PlayStation Plus Premium thing. So it, it'll. What they've announced is basically indie games will be on our version of Game Pass. On day one. Yeah. But not our own. Not our own games, but indie games wow. will be. Wow. Um, but no, this is cool. I'm still not going to buy their little subscription service to get this because it's probably going to be $20 anyway. Yeah. But I'm going to play this game. I think it looks freaking cool. Uh, then they announced a new update for Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, yeah. There's new weapons, new activities, new um, an ultra hard mode, no and things. some uh, <laughs> visual settings that weren't there originally at launch. Nice. Um, Should I go from the easiest difficulty to well, ultra hard? Second. I wasn't on the... You were on normal? Yeah, I was on, I was on the one that isn't the, like... Story? Story mode, yeah. Where you can't die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so then they announced that, uh, and then they had... I'm going to do VR at last. Uh, Street Fighter Six gameplay uh, looks insane, but I will not be playing uh, Street Fighter Six because I don't like Street Fighter. Comes out in 2023 on all platforms except for the Switch. So Sony has uh, given up the solo console approach. They're putting mm. it on PC and console or Xbox. So that's neat, I guess, for people who like Street Fighter. Um, <laughs> And then the big one that I think this was this was their heavy hitter, as they called it in the show. They're like, now for the heavy hitter. So everything prior to this was not a heavy hitter. Um, they revealed Final Fantasy 16, um, and they showed some gameplay, uh, and also one of the most beautiful shots I've seen in a trailer for a video game in a while. This game looks absolutely insane. I am very interested in it. But I need to see this. I was telling Luke this part of the show because I showed Luke the trailer. I need to see the systems around it um, because it looks like there's a lot of different games here. Uh, it looks like there's, you know, Mortal Kombat style fighter, a Devil May Cry hack and slash, the classic Final Fantasy RPG, and then a little bit of like just your now open world adventure type games all mixed into one package. And I just, I really don't know what this is going to be. Um, but I'm super intrigued by this. 
um, this game. And then, moving on from that, they had some PSVR stuff. They showed a Walking Dead game, uh, Saints and Sinners. Has the worst long title ever. Like, Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, something, something, Chapter 2. I was like, good <laughs> lord. Couldn't, couldn't help us out here. Uh, they showed Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is a Horizon Zero Dawn game where you play as a Karja Shadow Tribe member. Um, but it's VR. It looks really cool. You fight Thunder Jaws and stuff. And then Aloy is a character that is just in the game. Um, which I thought was super neat. That is an, an interesting. Yeah, it looks it looks good too. Like what they've showed of it, I was, I was super interested in. Um, they showed Resident Evil Village in VR, which huge no thanks for me on that. You can have nightmares tonight. <laughs> no, no, because I mean, the game looks the same. It's just you'd be playing it through VR, which playing it in first person on a TV was scary enough for me. <laughs> I don't need to play it in VR. I might. Soil my britches if mm. I do that. I um, that. And then, I can't remember if there are any other VR games that really caught my attention. But, uh, yeah, PSVR 2 is looking to have 20 games at launch. Nice. Um, I am, I am for as much crap as I give PlayStation about things, and most of it's in fun, I will say I appreciate that they have stuck with PSVR and are at least doing that. Like, it's something I wish Xbox had the balls to jump in and do. Well, they might. Well, I, yeah, and but it's Didn't taken them so it? long. <laughs> There's a huge rumor yeah. floating out there that it's happening. Maybe that's that second Xbox <clears throat> thingamajig. Who knows? Maybe, yeah, maybe that's cool. this upcoming Sunday. Now, Who knows? here it comes. Connect 3. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if they brought back the Connect, people would literally keel over and die. Connect 3. Mm, I'm selling my Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm done here. Um, I have one other gaming thing to get to. Uh, just that there's a second Xbox showcase, as Luke just kind of joked about. Yep. Coming on the 14th, which is just two days after the Xbox showcase on the 12th. Um, this one is June? expected to be... Yeah, June 12th, June, this upcoming okay. Sunday. Part of uh, Summer Games Fest or whatever. Um, it's expected to be an hour and a half long. It'll include uh, dev interviews to discuss some of the things that are revealed on the 12th. Um, like Connect 3. And just talk about, you know, upcoming <laughs> things. Interesting to note, Xbox Design Lab's website is down right now. Oh. So people are thinking that uh, Elite Controllers. Is, controller it, added. is it down? <laughs> yeah, it's down, yeah. It's put on they're working on it. Down to clown. Is the de has the design lab updated their controllers to be the the versions that come with the Xbox no. series? So that'll be one of them. The other yeah. rumor is uh, Xbox Series S's being in the design lab as well. That could be fun. Yeah, I thought that was neat. It'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't get the other console, but you can design your own for the same price. Okay. I want an Xbox, but make it baby blue. <laughs> I want flowers on it. What? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that's that's all the gaming stuff I got. I have only one other story. Well, what is it? Uh, Nev Campbell announced today that she would not be coming back for Scream 6 uh, due to the offer she got to be in the movie. Uh, I think this is a, hey, I'm not coming back. Pay me more money and I'll be there. Um, this is a Joe DiMaggio yep. Bender in Futurama. Yep. It's it's a it's. She knows she'll have the support of the fan base, and exactly. so she can do this. So the the fans will talk enough that they'll pay her. The the things I've I've been reading kind of a little bit about it because that movie's happening so fast, very quickly, and um, and it's a Lionsgate. I who does that? Paramount. Par is it Paramount? I think it's Paramount. Okay, um, so it's got some. It's got. Yeah, it's not I mean, not it's, that they're gonna spend big bucks on it, but no. like, but you, you they're would not keep they're not keeping it at a you know sub twenty million dollar budget probably. It's, right, it's probably in that thirty to forty range. Right, and then uh, what I've seen too is they think a lot of the this is all unconfirmed. This is just you know speculation. speculation. Uh, is that a lot of the stars from the first the, the Scream Five 
had uh, clauses in their contracts that they would see a pay bump if a sequel were to get sure. greenlit. Um, and so they think that maybe they just ran out of money mm-hmm. on, on casting because of that. Yeah. Um, which I say to that, kill off more characters and that's not a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So. And... You can bring her back for seven. Yeah. That they way. can sit out one or two or whatever. Part of me wonders if the money they wanted to give her is going to Hayden Pantier or whatever. Uh, since she's coming back yeah who knows i don't know but nev campbell pretty important to the scream franchise yeah uh so and and at this point they're moving that so fast that obviously her character is written into the story story so they have to either write her her out out or (laughs) pair yeah Yeah. i but again i think she has the support of the fan base i think they'll pay her like you said the the dimaggio thing's a great kind of yep barometer for that yep um real quick i have a couple news stories deadpool 3 um someone i don't remember if it's the writers uh was it sean levy was talking and they were asked about it and it was uh re ret res re um who ret and reese aren't they, aren't they the writers of the deadpool that sounds believable of the deadpool <laughs> Uh, essentially the, the quote was Deadpool is going to be Deadpool and so it will probably be rated. I, the question was, is Deadpool three going to be R and Deadpool is going to be Deadpool. So it sounds like Disney is feeling comfortable enough to let them do their own thing, which we kind of all expected. Um, you know, this is not one of those that's going to go in the kids area of Disney plus. And, the and same, that's okay. In the same breath, they also said Disney will tell them if their jokes go too far. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. It happens. There may not be as many uh, meta digs at themselves, at the corporation. <laughs> yeah, Disney won't do that. But. <laughs> that's okay. They'll, they'll have some, you know, I thought this was, this, I didn't know this was a DC universe. Like, they'll dig at DC and. Of course they will. So. Did you? Sorry. Do you have another news story? Uh, yeah. What We Do in the Shadows is renewed for seasons five and six. Nice. I freaking love that show. Taika is the right. Taika is for sure. you see that thing where he talked about and, being uh, lazy? You see that? Yeah. yeah. It's so great. I love it. I'm the laziest actor you've ever met. <laughs> He's um, like, I also, played Hitler? Did no research. <laughs> how uh, Our flag means death. Renewed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, but uh, Raised by Wolves was canceled. Raised by Wolves was canceled. Yeah. I haven't even finished season two, and that I makes me I don't even have sad. HBO Max anymore. I don't either. It's okay. such a shame, because that show is so good, but I'm just not surprised at no. all. Yeah, no, 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 no. not surprised. It, it's I, for a very specific audience. I appreciated I it, because it was telling a different kind of sci-fi story. It was doing things different than anyone else, and uh, unfortunately, that doesn't always hit. Um, mm-hmm. Which is why I think it's really important to understand when you're making that kind of content that you you never bank on more than one season. You tell a complete story. You can leave room for expansion mm-hmm. in, a, in additional seasons, but you know you always hate to end on a cliffhanger or some something unsatisfying, um, a thread that doesn't get finished because your your can't your show is canceled. So. I don't know if season did season two wrap things up for it pretty well or no no yeah <laughs> so that was yeah okay that's kind of what I expected but oh well we'll get more shows yeah that's definitely there's gonna be more of those types of things that come out as uh, the Discovery Warner Brothers merger. It's solidified, obviously. It's do- it's a done deal, but we'll just see more and more of those, I think, over this next year until they figure out what their system is going to look like, what mm-hmm. their pipeline, how they make things, how much money they give to, to projects. They We kind of talked about that last week a little bit, but um, there's always a little give and take. Netflix did the thing where for like three or four years, they blew way too much money on things, and now they're regretting that, and they're reshuffling their pipeline, so... It's an interesting time in the streaming wars. 
Haven't had a good update on that in a while. Maybe I should do something. Heck yeah. I want the map right there. <laughs> da, da, da. Right there. All right, that was that was all the news stories I had. Not a lot. Cool. Well, I'm I'm out of news. I have one funny rumor that kicked around all week, but I don't think we need to spend any time on it. So, Luke, did you have any what news? Was it? I don't have it written down. Just the whole Feige Marvel rift thing that was going on oh. why they fired the other dude <laughs> that made Feige the the head of it. Yeah. Homeboy said, "Oh, you guys, you guys want to keep him? I'll just go to DC. Like that's the most, most like petty thing ever." Oh my gosh! Which I mean, you think I, you think about it, he understudied on uh, Superman. Oh you, yeah, no. You know, there's a different timeline where that where happened. Kyvie, Kyvie, <laughs> Kevin Feige was in charge of like the DC universe, and Marvel was over here going release the, <laughs> release the Jenkins cut of release the door. The, yeah. Release- <laughs> Release the Alan Taylor cut. It would probably be the Wheaton cut. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. Of Ultron or Avengers or something. Oh. The first Avengers. Oh, it was, yeah. What a oh. time. I want to venture to that timeline. <laughs> just just take a peek. And yeah. See what it's like. How are they doing over there? Are they okay? 12 hours so I can watch. Snyder's directing for days. Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Snyder makes Captain America like a just a cold-blooded killer. He just makes him everyone. Soldier Boy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Cap just constantly like decapitating Nazis. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're not saying the we never screw see Nazis, it. We man. We never see it. I'm saying we never see it in the movie, Luke. Oh, okay. I'm not yeah. saying we, it doesn't happen. I'm saying we ever see it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. We should talk about Stranger Things. We should Stranger Things season four, uh, part one. Clarification there. We get the first seven Part episodes. One, all but two episodes. Yeah, yeah. Basically everything but the finale. Which acts one final, and two. The final two episodes, two movies. And those really. two episodes are going to be like as long as some show's entire <sighs> So <seasons>. freaking <laughs> long. Yeah, the first episode's like an hour 40, right? Yeah. And then the second one's like two and a half. 2.30? Mm-hmm. So, actually, as we start, you guys have kind of talked a little bit. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if you guys talked about episode length at all. I did not feel it one bit. No, I think it's paced out pretty well. Yeah. I I watched it straight through on Sunday. Wow. I took zero breaks and just one after the other. We The first night Dana and I watched it, we watched the first five. We did one, three, three. Nice. Yeah, we, we got to where we had the two episodes left and Dana's like, we're not watching it unless we can. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, okay. But but like I feel like if the episodes didn't have that length, the season would not have been good. Because there's so much happening. There's so many characters now. And I feel like they just said we have to give them all their due. We can't we can, just have we these characters there. A bit. Yeah. I think they some I, think, I think they could I think they up. could trim oh, quite a bit. With there's the, one thing they could just get rid of altogether and I'd be okay <laughs> with, but I'm interested in what what is is it spoilers? No, I don't. Well, real quick really, before yeah. we get into we specifics, talk let's talk about our our overall impressions. Um, it's also really hard to review a season when it's not done. It's not complete. Yeah. I was gonna ask if we wanted to even do ratings without it being complete, but I I think I, I honestly think Stranger it. Things will just always be a booyah to yeah. me. I am okay doing that because of how they packaged it. Yeah, well it's they a have, booyah. They for have me packaged too. this as a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they want us to talk about it as part one and part two. We didn't review Infinity War or we That's did true. not in view review Infinity War because we had to wait for Endgame. That's mm-hmm. true. I okay. think I think this is a similar thing. Well then it's a booyah for me. <laughs> Same. Um. Ryan Johnson wrote it, so it's a booyah. I hate you. <laughs> also, Eleven's in multiverses, so you, she's on all you consoles. Or what is it? What did you <laughs> have a drink or something tonight? No. You just no. Come out swinging. Heck yeah, man. All right. I, was he in the news or? Just felt no. like no. He was on your screen earlier. On oh, Twitter. on my Twitter. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, I'm gonna make fun of Ryan Johnson tonight. <laughs> that's that's the bingo card. I saw it. And I was like, 
okay, yeah, we'll go with that. Fair enough. Fair enough. Shout out Ryan Johnson for being a good sport for Scream, though. Awesome. <laughs> Shout out Ryan Johnson for making the best freaking Star Wars movie. <laughs> Not true. True. I don't freaking care. <laughs> <laughs> At least the I am gonna character. give I am gonna give part one a fanboy worthy. Noise. I Toxic is hater. No. <laughs> really, really good. And uh, I can't wait for part two, which I will probably give a booyah. So, but who knows? Maybe it completely falls off the rails. <laughs> and just like the next part starts, and you're just like, oh no, what it's is Game of Thrones on? season eight all over again? Oh gosh. <laughs> The Duffer Brothers were done. <laughs> but honestly, like... Dude, that would be wild. If the last two episodes, like, are terrible and they just throw a bunch of things at you that don't really make sense, I feel like it would you'd, probably... You'd retroactively move your, your rating down, for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 One, of the, one of the things surrounding those final two episodes that has been in the news today uh, is the final two episodes of this season um, will have more VFX shots than all of season three. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. But I mean, it makes sense. Are they going to be the upside down, down the, other, uh, the entire time? It certainly feels that way. I think we're going to, so something that, as we talk about season four, part one, um, like they're really getting into, they don't talk about it a lot, but they're leading into what is the upside down? Yeah, boy. They, they tease hmm. a little bit right at the end. Of part one, and that certainly and I was like, like <gasps> focus for part two. Yeah, did you Gasp. write out an impression thing? No. Nope. Did you write out an impression mm -hmm. thing? I did. Oh, read it. Yeah, I'll, I'll read my impression. I've nerd. already revealed my. This is uh, Tyler's writing. prepared statement. Prepared statement. <clears throat> I'll deliver it better than Amber Heard delivered anything she did. <laughs> uh, anywho's, Stranger Things has finally hit the horror stride it's been toying with. Great performances, fun new additions, and an intriguing villain. While there are some storylines that take you away from the better parts, season four is peak Stranger Things. Bring on part two. Yeah. I think this is right up there with season one. Yep. In terms of in terms of quality and intrigue and storylines. Yep. Um, no season of Stranger Things is bad. No. Um, but some are better than others. For and sure. I think this and one are absolutely the, the top yeah. of Stranger Things. Um in my opinion. Luke? I think season three is the best. I like season three. I just don't like season two if I pick one. Which I like. I just, there's things about it. I hate. Yeah. <laughs> I think season one is like 0. 0.1 degrees worse than season three. I just think season three adds so much. Season one's, just to continue with the star wars talk today tonight i think season one's a lot like a new hope it's so unique in what it is mm -hmm. and it's that i mean the fact that season four is playing on nostalgia from season one mm -hmm. tells you something right like yeah. there's something special about it is it the best maybe not but like when you look back at it critically but at the same time it it does hold a special place <clears throat> and so we may, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Three might be structured a little better or have better elements. I mean, I think each of these seasons looks looks better. They're obviously throwing more money at it. Yeah. Actor, the actors are all getting better. They're better performers. Um, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm really enjoyed this season so far, and I'm excited to see where they go even past part two into the final season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four four one. And three, I mean, they're all just so incredibly good. Mm -hmm. But I think four and one, I think it, it, you're, I think the tying them together is what makes it the four and one stand out. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think of this season's villain? I, I really liked him. It's my number one pro. Vecna <laughs> is great. Yeah. Um, what is Vecna? What is Vecna? Yeah, and <laughs> you know. Tying this is this is where I don't want to get into spoilers yet, but like tying the story up. Season four and five are about concluding this 
story. Yep. And this is where it's like, oh, we've got Uggs on my table. Eat it. You won't. Coward. I didn't. Um, you know, we're exploring a little bit more about like where things come from um, in the Upside Down. And I, and I really like that. And I think they're doing a good job of tying it all together. Mm -hmm. that's the most vague way i can say it <laughs> yeah I, I, for my for my kind of the, the pro when you talk about vecna i think vecna himself itself is a pro mm -hmm. and i think the the backstory of the kids makes it super interesting too and and how that's all related mm -hmm. i think it's it's really cool yeah it's nice to finally get some answers about that whole operation Agreed. What do you yep. guys? What you, Luke? What's, what, give me a pro. Just, just the cast. I feel like the best thing about the show has always been the cast and how well they work together. Mm -hmm. The MVP is always Dustin and Steve. Yeah, they're always Steve and Co. <laughs> always bring it, baby. <laughs> always the babysitter. <laughs> they're they're the best. So and great. I'm I'm really glad their story was Take the same place. Stage. Yeah, yes, it was yeah. the main part of the story, but also that they were together, that they weren't split up. Um cuz I feel like that would have been a big letdown. Yeah. Mm. Those two specifically <clears throat> are incredibly funny together. Yeah. Um but but everybody is good. Um and including all the new people. Um, I talked about that last week. It, it like they always nail their additions. Mm -hmm. like, when they bring new characters on board, like they always nail it. Like when they brought Max in, it, it was really good. Yep. When they brought in Eddie this season, it was really good. When they, Robin last season, Robin, Robin as last well. season, and yeah. Billy, and like they just have always nailed it. Mm -hmm. It's so impressive how they get these actors. I wonder how much like testing they do with the other the other actors before they say, okay, yeah, you're in. Yeah. Um, because it's it's worked every time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Bob, yes, Bob was a great addition. <laughs> like it was so good. Like they've done so incredibly well with that. It's it's so impressive. Yeah, and now I miss Bob. <clears throat> Dang it, <laughs> freaking Bob! <laughs> I'm getting emotional again. Yeah, my second pro was Stephen Co. Always bring it. Mm -hmm. Like just always. Mm -hmm. Anywhere Steve is, whoever the group he's with in every season. They bring it, man. I'm I'm a little bummed he never got his baseball bat though. I guarantee you, if he had that bat. Things might have gone a little smoother. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of storylines, and I think the Hawkins storyline is by and far the best one. Oh yeah. Um I don't know. I don't know how much of a spoiler those all go to. Yeah, I think I think the other because there's what, two other storylines? Three kind of. Four. There's Hawkins. The There's 11, Joyce, 11, Russia, and California. So, yeah. Are you grouping in the parents and cops and basketball team? As That's in Hawkins. Hawkins. Okay, you're counting that as Hawkins. It, mm -hmm. Hawkins is the beefiest yeah, part, it's, it's for big. sure. And w what's interesting to me is they... <laughs> sideline is not the right word because no one gets sidelined. Well, maybe one, one or two characters get sidelined this season. Um, but, you know, L doesn't uh, really get much to do until it's the second halfway half. through yeah. this. Um, but when they do get to her, her stuff is really, really mm -hmm. good. Um, it was, for me, it was Mike and the buyers and Callie. Um, it was it was good. I really enjoyed it, but it wasn't as interesting as the rest. And I don't know if this is a hot take. I didn't think the Russia stuff was really that great. Cut it from the show. That was my thing. Yeah, I don't need it. For, I don't need it for me. It just it was too long. Just, it it took the whole season to get where they did. Well, and everything they do to move it forward, and the, they they. Move it back in the same episode every the, single time. The other problem I have with it is I feel like it really confuses the timeline in my head. 
because they're they're traveling a lot mm. and then we go back to hawkins and it's like we're just moving at a normal time and then we're in a different state it's like how yeah. fast are we traveling yeah. it's it's a thing that they do in tv 24 the show did it all the time they're like we need to go across the city commercial break ding <laughs> ding ding and that show moves in real time mm-hmm. and then the it comes back and it's been six minutes and they've gone all the way across la mm. through la traffic and rush hour and it's just like okay i see what you did there <laughs> clever fair um, and I kind of feel like they do that a bit. I so to I, kind of spit, you know, spend a little more time on the on the Russia storyline specifically. I think I was most disappointed in that storyline because of what season three implied. I think season three was implying a much bigger thing with the Russians and where yep, what so all was, know, yeah what yeah. all was happening and how that and we kind of. It's just about a little rescue mission thing, right? Like, it's not really about the Upside Down. It's not really connected in any way, except we have a demigorgon, right? Like, You know what I think it is, and it, it bugs me? It's almost like, how can we, and this is weird, but how can we give David Harbour more to do? This season, we don't really have a whole lot. More. Well, I, th- I think <laughs> from a storytelling standpoint, it makes sense to force that separation um he'll bring home from the from the from the kids from joyce and make make everyone have to deal with their own struggles because individually they do all overcome their own little things throughout the season but they've they've kind of been groups right and there are still groups this time but they're even more divided than they've ever been and so it's like how how do we overcome this together as mm-hmm. as more and more um, of, as an individual or a smaller group. Mm-hmm. I think, and this is the part I do like about Joyce going to find Hopper, was the, the two people, adults, that know what's going on in Hawkins aren't there. Yeah. So nobody is there to back up the kids mm-hmm. when they're trying to do all this stuff. So mm-hmm. nope. So when Eddie's freaking out, and everybody thinks that he's this killer. Hopper would be like, oh, something weird's going on. It's not there. Joyce would be like, oh, something is weird going on. Yeah. And I know Joyce isn't even there in the beginning. But, but she will, she'll eventually... They're all going back. Yeah, they're, they're all, all going, going back. back. Yeah. But I, I do like how the, the kids and Hawkins are really on their own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not safe for them. Yeah. I've, I've enjoyed that a lot. I just, I just, I, I could do without the Russia stuff. The Russia personally. stuff, I feel like, shouldn't have lasted the whole season. It was, it was too long. And when I was like halfway through, I was thinking, I'm glad they're not just going, we got there, we got them out, let's go back. Like it was one episode type of thing. I was mm-hmm. like, they're going to take their time. And then it just like kept going. Kept going. going. <laughs> I was just like, okay, <laughs> interesting choice. Um, personally, oh, that might be a spoiler. So I'll, I'll wait to say that. But. Yeah, no, uh, I'll say my one hot take from for for that is, uh, you know, I I think at the end of season three they just should have let Hopper die. I know he's gonna have. He's gotta have his hero. He's moment. gonna have what? But he was. He has a hero moment every season, but he's gotta have another one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It we're just getting to that point in this series where. So many other series or, or series live, which is we can't actually kill off anyone. All I know is that they're <laughs> going to kill off somebody and it is going to upset some people. Oh, for sure. And I'm glad we're getting there. Um, I just think you could have started with Hopper in, at the end of three. But yeah, um, I thought... Music choices, soundtrack was fantastic this season. Kyle Dixon and Michael Stein never miss. Never. The the, the score they do is always so good. Very, very, so very, good. very, very good. Yep. They crush it. I My last pro is just horror. Yeah. They lean into it a lot more this season than they have in the we, past. We talked about it yeah. last week. Um, it's kind of growing, you know, the horror aspect is growing up with, with the kids, with the, yeah. kids, with the audience. 
Um, we're getting a little more intense. Um, I will say by the end of the season, I felt I felt like some of it was a little goofy. I don't know why. Maybe just because I was I feel seen like it enough. The like only one enough. that looked good to me was the first one. I think yeah, I think oh, it's because like you're, ex- yeah, yeah. you're not expecting it and And maybe this is my actual hot take. I think the first season is the scariest season. Because there's so much they don't show you. Yeah. Which in my opinion is usually scarier. Usually better, yeah. Um That said, that guy looks great. <laughs> yes. So I think what makes this so like so much scarier for me. I struggled with nightmares a lot as a kid, mm-hmm. and this gives me super Freddy Krueger vibes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it just Freddy. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. little reminder of myself as a kid. Like, yeah, I would be horrified. Well, of this. that that plus the, plus the uh, you know we hadn't we haven't really gotten into this kind of possession in Stranger Things. Also, the England is in this. So by the way, okay. Robert England is in it. Mm-hmm. Is he Victor Creel. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That, that is a neat little yeah. Easter egg. Should we get into spoilers? Let's do it. Yeah, my only con was Russia. So. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I, I, have some, I, I have some more nitpicky cons, but... I feel like I don't have any, any cons. It's just like hopes and wishes that they would kind of adjust. Um, one being, they always have a theory and they're always right. And like Dustin even makes a comment on it, which I thought was really funny. He's like, when are you guys going to actually start believing me when I'm always right? I thought that was funny, (laughs) but it's like, Nancy is like, I'm going to go look into Victor Creel. Yeah. Turns out it was the right call all along. Every choice they, they're like, I need to go check this out. Always links in somehow. Mm-hmm. And I kind of wish somebody would be wrong. There's and maybe the one something time, bad the, happens because of it. The one time that happens is in Russia, where it's like, oh, the escape fails. Yeah. Right? And that's like, not saying that that would be bad with the kids. I want that to happen with the kids, and I'd rather, I think I would have rather him just got away or they somehow managed to cut that entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're right. And my guess is that they're just. Trying they're to move doing, it along. They're doing so much already. Those these episodes are packed. That to like yeah. have another setback. That's that takes up a valuable amount of time and costs a lot of money. So mm-hmm. at some point you do just kind of have to move it along. But I'll, you know that's a good that's a good point, Luke. I like that. I hadn't really thought about that. Like they 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 find Eddie for the first time and they're like. Oh, it's a dark wizard possessing. It's like Vecna. <laughs> like everything goes back to D and D, which I think is awesome. It's fantastic. But like immediately, they're just like, we need to do this, 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 this. Oh, actually, I'm gonna go to Victor Creel. Oh, look at that, they're connected. Like, yeah, kids are dumb. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm dumb, and I'm thirty. I'm probably dumb. Well, and kids, I, but... I I liked how in the first season you don't really f- make that connection until i mean it takes a little while right there is some mystery there there's some not sleuthing but just running away and being in in terror for a while (laughs) which and by now here in season four they're kind of like well we've we've done this three times already embraced it we Mm -hmm. we we've fought the mind flare we're gonna we're gonna go for it so um i can kind of get the confidence but yeah i think it would be I think it would be nice if they got put in their place once or It'd twice. be a nice subversion. Mm-hmm. They've been right. Every, like, they're always cruising along, fighting evil. And then what if, shoot, we were wrong and somebody died because of it. And uh-huh. then they could be. I think, be, we're I think, I think it's probably the end of season four. Honestly, yeah, I but. thought that was going <laughs> to happen with Max. I mm. thought she was going to die. Um, Man, but her episode... So good. I thought so dear, good. I thought Dear Billy was the best episode. That's what I By told far. you it before. Is. No, and it, it is. is. Yeah. It is. I had oh. told him after last week. I was like, dude, Dear Billy. That dear and Billy. It might, the, might the way been... they shot that episode is super cool too. If you That's a spoiler. We're in spoilers. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> Daker I didn't realize we had gotten there. Yeah, Daker uh talked about how they did it and they he filmed it at home in Australia. It's crazy. And uh 
the Duffer Brothers and everybody directed him through Zoom. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. They just went to like one of the lots mm-hmm. out there and they, they filmed it all. Oh, that's really cool. I, th- I think it's the last episode, too, that I really liked where... No, it's the last last two, maybe. When Steve gets sucked through the gate. Yeah. And then he's getting bit by all those bats. Getting messed up. He getting messed up. He got his bat, just not the one he wanted. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I think... Eddie so, had the oar. They all had it, the oar. Yeah. I um, think uh, I think Steve might bite it. I think it's going to be Eddie. I think... It's unfortunate, because I love Eddie. I yeah, think... I know. He's awesome. <sighs> I see, and this is where but they've done right, a good job. He's been talking about being afraid all the time. He's gonna do something brave. And brave he's killed. Yep. Yeah, I. They've done a really. I'm frustrated, but in a good way, because <laughs> they've done a good job. Where like, you like everyone. Well, specifically well, with the Nancy, Steve, and Jonathan thing. Like, I don't know what I want. Oh. Because. Jonathan's kind of being a little weird. Weird this season. I, he's always been a little, but that's okay. like that's I. I don't. I need. I don't need this movie to or the show to just be like, oh, we're gonna like the traditional like masculinity and like the the athletic kid is gonna get the pretty girl. Yeah. Like I don't need that. Um, but at the same time, like Steve just has such good charisma, and they they have good chemistry together, and so I just don't. I think they're wanting me to feel that way. Why they want me to feel that way? Are they killing someone off? I don't know. It's a good frustration. I just want to see the resolution before I judge it. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think if they kill off Steve and she gets together with Jonathan, not that they're knowingly broken up yet. Right. um, I, I think that would make it less intriguing. I think if she makes a decision... And yeah then, like because then, well, like, then we, the decision is made for her we right? always talk about yeah characters who make decisions yeah. are the most interesting characters right. but i'm right right now i just we don't see any of the drama between jonathan and nancy and so it's easy to be like oh well steve and nancy are the ones they're together right now yeah i mean they're giving each other the eyes admittedly i don't really care about that yeah um as much but if i had to choose i think i'd choose steve well jonathan gets probably the least amount of screen time out of all the original characters just jonathan season. and will and mike yeah yeah all of them have not very much to do it's it's interesting how the show gravitated because like mike was such a he was big part of the early seasons and now mm-hmm. he's just kind of yeah. gravitated into this like background character who's just kind of there I also don't think he's the strongest actor I out agree. of yeah. the group, so that could be, yeah, intentional on a from a writer's standpoint, yeah. you know, playing to your strengths. But at the same time, I have a lot of care for the kid. <laughs> yeah, care about his story and mm-hmm. and yeah, and to see him and uh, well, their group and L split halfway through. That was. I like what they did with Elle's backstory stuff and going into that more. Um, but, like, that, then they just became useless. Like, I didn't need them going to Salt Lake to find the, so that, that's, these girlfriends. I think out of all the, like, the stories, the story I didn't really need, but it feels like it has to be there to get them moving, was, the, like, the government trying to kill them. <laughs> Shooting up their house. <laughs> yeah. Stuff? Yeah. What the heck? I, yeah, it was, uh... <laughs> And, like, now we're torturing that guy to get the location of Eleven. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. But yeah, that was... I, I also don't know what I would do to get them... To where they need to, to go. To where they need yeah. to go. Like, just, we're just going to look for Eleven. Where are they going to just draw? <laughs> just don't separate them. Yeah. Why do you need to separate them? Maybe they should have came to Hawkins for spring break instead. Or they could all be out in... Cali? Cali. They, everything could happen the same up until the the split. They they need, just need to get out of town because someone's looking for Elle because she assaulted someone. Like, she hit someone in the head with the roller skate. Crap. Dude, she the cop, freaking pulverized <laughs> that girl. The cops are on us. We need to get out of Dodge. I legit thought she actually killed that girl. 
Like the crunch of the skate it against your skull is like, oh my god, well he's dead. Well, good sound design around that. Yeah. 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 Sound design. We didn't really talk about that. The like um, the, the clock. The, oh yeah. I love the clock. And the do you, you watch with subtitles, right? Oh, always. The amount of times it says squelching. Yeah. Oh, so much <laughs> squelching. Can we talk about the clock a little bit? I felt like the clock was. You had mentioned something about the clock, and then I was looking for it, and then I didn't see it. So either I missed something or I misunderstood you, which was something with the boyfriend, the 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 high school jock. The closer he got to doing something, the had to do with the clock. I didn't understand the clock, other than it's a scary th- noise that uh you know has been around every season, and. It was the grand. Apparently, it was the grandfather clock in the Creed house. Was that the only thing? There wasn't like a deeper meaning there. I'm trying to remember what I said. I don't even. Well, I mean, I think it just might lean into the fact that we might be dealing with time travel now. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a whole thing too. Also, I can't take credit for this. You must have missed that. <laughs> yeah, well, when they go into the upside down through the the bottom of the lake. Oh, oh, they're it's... like, this was my room three years ago. Yeah, right, right, right. And so you're like, wait, what? <laughs> So, yeah. yeah. The the other thing is So my initial thought was the counselor is extremely sus for some reason and I don't know why I get those vibes from her. Mm. Um and then I saw people talking and they're like she has a necklace in the shape of a key with a clock on it. And there are a lot of people thinking that that key goes to the grandfather clock because there's a lock on the on the clock. Clock on the clock. Clock on the clock. I think the if you want if you want what I think the clock is, much like music is their way out, I think the clock is Vecna's way in. Mm. Also like that. it sounds yeah. like a metronome. Yeah. That's my thought. Yeah. I, I maybe I misread it. Well no no I, I, I think like that's that. good. That's not, that's not what I Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think I must have just misunderstood what you were talking about then. I, I probably interpreted whatever you said because I can't even remember it exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. Now, so. I'm gonna have to go back and listen and see. No. What oh, was it was it? post. Oh, it gotcha. was it was off the air. Yeah. No, he's just I, the the basketball dude, the head guy. Great actor. Uh, looks you know looks way too old to play a high school person, <laughs> but that's pretty normal anymore. That's standard Hollywood. Yeah. Yep. Honestly, it felt like a kind of a little jab at Hollywood at the beginning <laughs> to me, but I did I did like that subplot. Because it did put the kids in real in real danger outside of the outside, outside of the upside, upside down. down. Yeah, <laughs> you know because like you had mentioned earlier, the the adults who know what's going on aren't around. Yeah, uh, you know part of the cost of keeping all these other adults in the dark is that oh crap now we got a witch hunt and they're they don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Also, confident. <laughs> I loved that they brought in the D and D. Is a is, is a cult satanic thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cult thing. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Loved I wondered it. if they'd ever get into that. Yeah. I'm glad they did. I, I, I think that was a great story point to add because it adds so much fuel. Well, it gives the parents more of something to like bat eyes at. Because mm-hmm. like before, they only bat eyes at like weird, random things. Mm-hmm. Poor Billy. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, their club is called the Hellfire Club, which yeah. probably doesn't help. They're all like, oh, <laughs> yeah. that doesn't help our uh, cause. <laughs> But no, I, I'm glad they, they leaned into that. I thought that was cool. Uh, back to music mm-hmm. and Vecna. Um, I thought it was so cool that they used music as the anchor to get out. And they did that in season one with Will. Mm-hmm. They played uh, Should I Stay or Should I yep. Go Now? Yeah, that's right. I was just like, this is freaking awesome. Dude, the ties to season one are insane. Yeah. There's a lot. It's so cool. Should I stay or should I go? So I guess let's uh let's talk Vecna since you know we kind of talked about how we all like him. Uh, what do you guys think of the reveal of who Vecna was? Kind of, I kind of think it was telegraphed, but so the reveal that he was one, I thought was done really well. Yeah. Even though I did see it coming. I kind of talked yeah. about it with Top Gun, where it's like when something is predictable, but it still impacts you when it happens. Yeah, is underrated in storytelling. 
what I wasn't expecting was Vecna was the the boy in mm. the Creole boy. Oh, yeah, yeah. That Yeah, they're all the let's tie everything together. Like you right? see him there and yeah, he's like, like, "Oh, he's what? dead." Yep. And you think it's some upside down thing, yeah. monster mm-hmm. or and then it's like, "Oh, it's it's one and he's been there." And it's like, "Oh, it was that kid." Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. What an angry little child. They do they do such a good job of tying those like giving us an image the dead family or the the dead kids in the uh asylum and making mm-hmm. us assume one thing and then later being like oh actually it wasn't 11 who killed these kids it was this guy and oh it was one of the people you assumed was dead was actually the one who caused all this and you know they tied it together so well it's seamless it's so oh, it's so good and like and how Vecna was telling that to Nancy, so it brought every story yeah. together. Well, no, not every story. Will, Will, <laughs> and the buyers and the Russians are out doing their subplots, yep, their side missions, but like to connect the Hawkins story and the the Eleven story. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah, I I just the kid who plays Vecna uh, played young Grindelwald. What's his name? So. The, the, the reveal that uh, James Jamie Campbell Bauer. Oh, that was pretty close. <laughs> um, the reveal of, of him being Vecna was uh, spoiled for me. Oh, um, that's a bummer. I'll explain it to you after the show. It, it was super frustrating. Anyways, so I knew it was going to be him, which I think I would have put together anyways because mm. of how present he was. It's like, oh, that's not an accident. Plus his freaking creepy face. I actually said that as like this kid probably just landed himself every opportunity to be a serial killer in a movie in the future, because um, he certainly has the look. Um, I, I thought he was really good though. Yeah. Like, you know when he's just being himself, I was really impressed with his ability. Plus, like yeah. just throughout the the season, you're going, I I don't trust this dude. Right. I don't trust this dude. I don't think. I trust this dude. He's being kind of compassionate. Oh, yeah, he's bad. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's going to be bad. Yep. Oh, wow, he just killed a bunch of children. So, okay, very bad. <laughs> very, so my question bad. surrounding Vecna is, uh, one, what what is Vecna's motivation? Like, do we ever really get a clear... So the only thing I can think of is they... they Dusty, uh, of course, makes a... Uh, observation that will probably end up correct because Dusty's always correct. Yeah. Which is, you know, if the Demogorgons are the foot soldiers, yep. Vecna is the, the lieutenant or general, general and the like the mind player is the king. The, like yeah. I don't know if he needs much motivation. I think too like um is the mind flayer dead? Didn't they kill him? See, so that's what I, I, think I don't he, know. I no. think he's crazy. He's a serial killer. I think he's just kind of now he has the opportunity to be unleashed because there's not a psychic being holding him back. See, and or I'm controlling him. So, because he doesn't think L has her powers. Yeah. See, and I'm wondering if, you know, part of this, uh, part of the the plot of them getting into it was well, we've got to find an entry point. If he's, if Vecna is making entry points strategically, like there could be reasons why he's choosing people when he chooses them. And it's not necessarily because of they're dealing with past trauma or whatever, which is kind of what I was looking for um, and thought would be interesting. But instead it's, well, where kind of are they at? And how can I get, if, you know, some people may be a little more resistant to the, him getting into their mind, but if you can find the right person, then they have a... Because uh, he, just, he just jumps on Nancy. A Trojan horse. Like, like that. Yeah. And she wasn't seeing clocks or had headaches or any mm-hmm. of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it seems like he can kind of do it to anybody. See, Dana made a comment when we were watching, and I, I, didn't, I didn't even think about it. But she was just like, he's looking for something. But then I was like, what is he looking for? I think he's looking for 11. That, that's the only thing I could think of, because... I think he has this weird compassion for 11. Yeah. Like, why, why have her get out, but kill the rest? Right. Because she's just 
powerful and yeah. he could see that when she was a little kid my first thought when when you kind of get the showdown between him and eleven kind of um my first thought was he is the upside down and then I kind of backed off of that and maybe he's just a portal like he uses the clock mm-hmm. um but I don't know and like Dustin even says like the upside down probably was always there yeah well it's yeah and it's interesting when we see the first portal created when L and Ele- L and and uh one. One. one 11 and 1 have their fight and she wins and you see him floating through kind of unformed upside down space right it's just like burning him up right yeah so i th- i think this idea maybe maybe that L didn't create the upside down but she put someone in there who can form it <laughs> can form it or yeah you know something with that day the fact that it you talked about the time travel thing that day is when you know the journal date same day that all that happened that's important or remember last season the mind flayer was consuming people and knew everything about them did the mind flayer kind of do that to one and oh got all these abilities and was like I'm going over there to get some more. Yeah. Because I, I still... Because that's what Vecna is doing too. Yeah. Right? And when he kills them, doesn't he... He's like, you'll you'll join me. Come yeah, join me. He's kind of becoming a hive mind and of they, sorts. They call it a hive mind too when they're yeah. over there. Yeah, don't yeah. touch the, the vines or whatever. Rip yeah. vine. Rip yeah. vine. Uh, in the uh, chat, Game Lord Master <laughs> chimed in. Maybe one is trapped by the Mind Flare, and he's trying to get out as well. Or there's something even worse than the Mind Flare and Vecna. Mm. Don't be crazy. I'm very interested in the tease for the next, at the end of the next two episodes, what they'll tee up. Mm-hmm. Because uh, honestly, like this feels like it's the end. Yeah. This feels like the end of, of Stranger Things to me. Um, so I'm very curious to see what they kind of leave open moving forward. Yep. Yeah. Gosh dang it, dude. It's so good. It is. <laughs> July 1st, man. It is. Here. <laughs> I want to know what's up with the freaking counselor. She's so sus, man. I don't trust her. I gave the counselor zero thought. Now I, I know, like right? I need to go back. <laughs> She she talks to all the kids that all, get all killed. The kids that get killed. All the kids that get killed. She mentors or whatever. Dude, she's in on it. She's she's a bad potato. Who knows? Maybe she's yeah. She's Bre- Brenner's she, daughter or something like that. One's. That doesn't make sense though. That's not the. Uh, no, right not. All right. Oh yeah, but Doctor Brenner was back, and that made me happy. Yeah, Brenner. I thought Brenner he was, was great. Good. What if Brenner is the villain of season five? Nah. I think it'd be boring, but actually, they would make it work. They'd make it good. They'd make the mind flare fly out of Brenner and <laughs> bring the upside down. I'm wondering if they're gonna ever maybe season five is bringing the upside down into real world i don't mm. know i just i'm just I, trying to think of things we haven't really seen yet and we haven't really seen that invasion yeah a little bit in season three at the very end but that's really still just one character mm-hmm. i don't know it's gonna be fascinating can't wait um no fan box questions this week so if you are I listening have, I I have one more thing I'd like to say about Stranger Things. The, I apologize for moving too quickly. The most underrated character who needs to be more involved is Erica, L- Lucas's sister. Oh, yes. yeah. She is so freaking funny. Yes. And she was great in season uh, three, yeah. and she's great in season four, and I just want her to be a part of the group so she could just make fun of all of them all the time. I freaking yeah. love her. Yeah, she's yeah. great. She she can be the uh, um, the comedic r- relief when Dustin dies. Over Argyle? Over, no, what's the... I mean, Argyle was fine. He cracked me up a few times. He, he Dude, was good. Okay, no, the funniest but, part of the entire season, though, is when they go to Susie's house. 
Yeah. <laughs> and the freaking kid is through the doors. It's like, ah! <laughs> oh, I was dying during that scene. Why can I not remember? Oh, uh, Murray. I don't. Oh, yeah. He's probably going to be the one that dies. Murray's Murray's That's fine. Funny. I think he would do fine like that. Mur- again. Murray's an action star, man. That, that storyline by itself, not bad, but it just kind of felt like it bogged down. This, like, it was... Yeah, some of that stuff was just there for comedic relief, and I could have used comedic relief from somewhere else. Murray just had to believe he could do it. <laughs> I believe I can fly. I could not stand any of the Russia stuff, man. And I, I feel like we're just on a, a fast track for sky. Hopper to be a surrogate father to somebody else's kid again. With what's his nuts, the Russian dude. Real quick, before we leave uh, Enzo. Stranger Things, Enzo, yeah. Game Lord asks, or says in the chat, I thought it was super interesting that we saw Barb. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe Vecna has been in play the whole time. Probably. Probably. I think Vecna has been pulling strings behind the scenes. And I think that's what that implied. That he was behind the taking of Barb. Um, <laughs> they, I've even heard it's people kind of say chilling. Vecna is the one who took Will. Yeah. Um, cause, I mean, a Demogorgon is... They even call it, They compare it to a shark. Yeah. In the first season. Well, and season. when does the Demogorgon really do anything but attack and eat and feed like it doesn't take necessarily yeah so i, th- I think that's absolutely right good thought game Lord master i like it tyler you said you had a fan box question yeah uh it comes from me oh um with summer games fest kicking off this week do you guys have a prediction that there will be a reveal you know what what is one prediction that comes to mind for you guys well, in the summer of gaming little <laughs> thing, they showed Destiny 2, so I'm wondering if we get a peek at, at oh. Lightfall, or the next a Lightfall dark, Darkness subclass. For Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Will they? I don't think so. But could they? Potentially. Potentially. They always could. I think it's a shot in the dark, though. Um, man, the easy one is Starfield for, uh, gameplay. I definitely think. happening but i want to make some tyler do you have one i, I do I'm trying to think of something a little more um but as it pertains to there. starfield i would say i think they're going to show people why we need to wait mm. i think they're going to be like hey this is our gameplay we promise you it'll be worth waiting for yeah um my my prediction is i think death loop gets announced for game pass oh yeah no that makes sense i think i think the exclusivity is up i think we'll find out when it's going to be on game pass yeah probably Fall. I would say probably fall. fall. I think they probably just need yeah. to finish porting it. Probably. Uh, I, crazier fiction. Mm-hmm. I think. I think the the Marcus Phoenix collection is very much a real thing. I like that prediction. I think that's safe. I think it's a real thing because my initial prediction would be something about Halo Infinite, but I honestly think they're going to be pretty reserved. I think they're going to announce the Forge beta. Probably Forge beta and probably reveal some new maps that are either coming in their next event. In season two or in se- like at the beginning of season three. Yeah. Like, I don't think they can wait past that. I if think I if, think they need to try and drip some out here over the summer. And then, yeah, Forge with Forge in there and, you know, new maps created by the team specifically like the new forge is supposed to be really really robust um but maybe some classic favorites yeah i think in season two we'll get classic maps yeah 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 my big my big prediction is death loop to game pass yeah i just thought of fanbox question oh hit it and if you can't think of one fast because i know we've gone pretty long but well and it's stranger things related oh, what yeah. would what would your song be like get me back yeah it, it's a really it's, it's hard to answer i think I, mine's super easy um and it's a i don't know if anybody's even gonna know it but it's called second and sebring by of mice and men my favorite song in high school I've had so many favorite songs. That or Walls by Emery or Momentum by Don Diablo. I could think of a billion songs that would fit it, but I think Second and Sebring would... I feel like I would have to pick a song that I have never gotten tired of and that just 
I always sing along to when it mm-hmm. comes up, which would be Carry On My Wayward Son mm. by Kansas or Separate Ways by Journey. Mine would be Somewhere I Belong from Linkin Park. It's a good one. That whole album is what just would, special to me. What would... Fun. That's a fun idea. I like that question. It's a good question. Thank you, Luke. Yeah. Oh, no I don't... I don't you guys both came up with What would your song be? Let us know in the comments. Or tweet it at us. Tweet it at us. I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll it's tweet a, song, a question. Maybe it's some songs that I don't know and I can listen to. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's something uh you guys can look forward to. If you've made it through this whole episode, first off, congrats. <laughs> um but be on the lookout on Twitter for um I'll be posting a a article on the website this week. Maybe something Jurassic inspired. Um did you draw a dinosaur? Be thinking of your favorite your favorite dinosaur moments from Jurassic Park and let us know. Oh, did you make that? <laughs> I can't wait to read it. So yes, uh, be on the lookout for that this week. Mine uh, is when Jeff Goldblum goes up to the Tyrannus or the Triceratops and is like, mm, "That's a big pile of shit." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh, not right, really, but it is funny. Uh, real quick before we leave, one last thing. I just want to Nick over in the chat, killing it today uh, with Twitch. I appreciate appreciate you. Love you, Nick. Um, Nick is hoping for a battle royale announcement for Halo. I think Game that's Pass. a very very real possibility. And his song is Bohemian Rhapsody. Nice. You too. I want you to know if you're if you're watching this or. Uh, listening to this, you can you can be a part of the show if you watch it live on Twitch Monday nights, eight PM Central. Um, I honestly just love the interaction. The extra interaction is fantastic. Um, but of course, if you don't, that's fine. Uh, we have the show over on YouTube where you can still watch it and kind of get that like the visual gags that we do just naturally, and we don't mention it uh, because we're just used to being on camera. Sorry, you audio listeners only. <laughs> Don't get to see all those visual gags. And uh, you can do that over at YouTube. Uh, but of course, you know, if you like listening to us on your way to work or whatever, uh, we appreciate you listening to the podcast. So, Indeed. episode 250, what was this, 52, 53? I don't even know anymore. We will be, uh, we won't actually, I talked about being live on Monday nights. We won't be live on Monday night next week. Um, we will update. Brett is gone. We'll update. We'll update uh, on Twitter when we're going to do that. If we're going to do a live show, for, it'll just be a pre-recorded thing. Um, but yeah, Jurassic World's coming out, so we're going to be reviewing that next. The next time you hear from us, Jurassic World Dominion. My favorite Jurassic Park moment is whenever somebody does this. <laughs> <laughs> Holds off a, a dinosaur with their hand. That's how you stop dinosaurs, bro. That's right. All right. Well, thank you all for watching and listening. I'm 11. And until next week, we'll see ya. (laughs)